Amen. 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 Not what a preacher. Not what a church. Not what a good Christian. But oh, what a Savior. Amen. 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 If you got your Bibles, Sunday school class is going to smile. Uh, I want you to go to Hebrews 9 and verse number 27. I'm not going to preach what I did in Sunday school the last two weeks, though I will just touch it. And, but I am going to preach the last four of these. Uh, Roger, I just, I, 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 I'm so in tune to this message. I'm go, I better stay where I'm in tune to, amen? And I want you to look at Hebrews chapter number nine. I know there's people here lost. I want you to know something tonight, today. The Savior made it, made, it, made it available to you. You could be saved. He didn't, he didn't die for one elect group. He didn't die just for that person. That He died for the whole world. Amen. amen. How many says amen? amen? How many glad that includes you? Amen. <laughs> amen. Hebrews 9. And verse 27, I'll try not to do a lot of introduction and spend time on what I've already done, but I will hit it a little bit. The Bible said, this is the word of God, this is not John Smith's opinion. Here's what the problem is. There's a lot of people giving their opinions, but they don't give the Bible. Amen? I ain't interested in your opinions. I'm interested in what the Word of God says. It might rub you the wrong way. It might even go get some of what stuff you used to believe in. But whether you, hey, you could have believed wrong on something. Amen on that. Good preaching, Reverend. Verse 27, are you there? And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. How many of y'all agree with that statement? Amen. It is a point in man wants to die. Right. Outside the rapture, everyone in this room will die one day. Amen. And then you are going to face a judgment. Now here's the Here's why I've been teaching this series in Sunday school and I'm finishing it up this morning. There is a wrong belief that, and I'll get to this point in a moment because it's part of my lesson in, in, in morning preaching. Some people believe in a general judgment and a general resurrection. Here's what they believe now, and I will refute this in a minute. They believe the Lord's gonna come. No tribulation. No millennial. The Lord's going to come. He's going to gather all the people together. And you people that done good are sheep. And you people that didn't love the brethren are goats. And all you goats are going to hell. And all you sheep are going to heaven. And that's it. That ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. Amen. Actually, there are seven judgments. I've covered three already uh, in the Sunday school, and I won't re preach them other than I'll hit it just a notch on them because I want to emphasize something here. Uh, first of all, there was the judgment for the penalty of sin on Calvary. Yeah. Thank God. You said what was the subject? It's the penalty of the sin. When did it happen? A.D. 30. Some of you said, no, it was A.D. 33. You better check your calendar. And where was it at? It was at Calvary. What was it based on? It was based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, preacher, why aren't you going to hell? Why aren't you going to burn in hell? Why aren't you going to suffer forever and ever and ever? I'll tell you why. I'm not basing my, my salvation on my works, on my baptism, on my goodness, or really anything. I'm basing it on the finished work of Jesus. He paid it all. To all him all. 
The result, the result of that judgment was the death of Christ and the justification of the believer and eternal life to you and I. Therefore, there is that. Therefore, now no condemnation Amen. to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. Man, I may just That's bust out of the... You know what that means? That means I can't be lost and I can't go to hell. Once you got under the blood of Jesus Christ, you cannot and you will never go to hell. I know what some of you are thinking. Now he's preaching eternal security. Was there anything else to teach? Now it's either dependent on you or dependent on him. I'm tipping on him because I know me. I'm in hell, but if I got it, my worst has got to do it, I'm in hell. I'm burning forever. But there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Somebody help me preach. Thank God. Thank God it was nailed to the cross. Thank God no, I cannot be condemned because I cannot ever face the penalty of sin. That's good preaching. Then also, and I'll, I'll just cover this quickly, the second judgment was self-judgment. Judge yourself, let you be judged. The subject's not salvation, the subject's fellowship. The time is every day. The place is wherever you are 24-7. The basis is uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. The result is that you either get in fellowship with God or you get chastised. I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna be real close. I'm gonna be real sober here. I don't wanna upset none of you, but I might as well tell the truth. If you're in this room and have made some kind of profession, but you're not receiving chastisement, when you're sin, you are not saved. I am not trying to make you doubt. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. The Bible says, for whom he loveth, he chastises. And I will say this. You might be a stubborn head and don't take the first chastisement like inner count, you know, your conscience and God gets you right, you know. If you live close enough to God, that's all to be. You do wrong, you know you did, and you get right with God. So most people don't live close, so God then has got to turn the heat up. I do believe this, and I don't want to scare you. There is a sin unto death for the Christian. I believe if you lose your testimony, and you really were saved, and you're no good for anything else anymore, God will take you out. Now, I want to tell you, that's, that's, that's about as straight as I'll ever get it, but that's the truth. But let me go on. Uh, then I cover the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ is about the believer's works. Amen. It's about your good works, your bad works. Amen. The time of that is at the rapture of the church. Somebody help me. The place is the judgment seat. The basis is good works, bad works. The result is reward or loss of reward. Amen. I'm going to make a statement. I, I can prove it, so don't you say that yeah, it's wrong. You could gain a crown and then turn around and lose it. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Amen, preacher. Amen. Yes, sir. <sighs> I won't even bother y'all people. I'll just talk about me. I'm the pastor. Look at me. I am the pastor. I'm working for a pastor's crown. I think, you know, I, I've had my good days and my bad days, but I've been faithful at it. But, 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 but. Let's just say I get down to the 11th hour Y'all with me? Bless you, preacher. And I let temptation hit me. And I fall into sin or 
I just quit. Just quit under the pressure. Y'all have no idea what being a pastor is, the pressure it is. And I just say, well, I ain't taking this no more. You say, well, nobody does that. I just got a call last week of a preacher friend of mine who had been preaching 52 years, just got up before church and said, I can't handle you anymore, and he quit. And you know what happened? They got another preacher, and he lost his crown. Boy, it's quiet in here now. Somebody help me preach. Yeah, and I, 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 and I talked about the five crowning crowns, a crown of life. That's enduring temptation. If you're tempted to evil, tempted to sin, uh, James talks about keep. Uh, Corinthians talks about keeping your body under section. James talks about living right, living holy, and not falling into sin. If you don't fall into sin, you'll receive the crown of life. That's that's in the Bible. Amen. And I want to say this about this judgment. And there's some people may not agree with me on this, and that's okay. You go ahead and not, and you go ahead and be wrong. I'm just straight, I'm flat, get right in your face. You go ahead and be wrong if you want to. But here's what it says about that judgment seat of Christ. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Bless you, preacher. I don't know. Graham Scroge, uh, Scro- Scrog. 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 There you go. <laughs> you know what he said? I don't know if I make this statement, but I understand why he said it. He said, I'd rather go through the tribulation period than stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Boy, it's as quiet in here as a mouse. I want you to know something. That judgment seat of Christ ought to bring you to a place you want to live right, do right, and got to understand every idle word, everything you said since you've been saved, everything going through the fire. You ought to thank God for one thing. Your works all might burn up. You you just look, you know what? And he covered it. He, it's so scary that people say, well, Lord God, I'm going to lose my salvation. Now, no, you can't lose your salvation because of what he done to Christ. But the Bible said the same shall be saved even so by fire. Some people's words are all going to be burned up. And the only reason they'll be in heaven is because of the blood. Amen. And if you don't think that doesn't terrify John Smith, it terrifies me. Boy, it's quiet in here today. We having a funeral? That's scary stuff, Jeff. And I know there's a bunch of soft soakers. I got a friend of mine that wrote two books about it who's absolutely wrong. He also wrote about storehouse salvation. Doesn't believe in local church salvation. That man's wrong. And I respect him. I like him. But good people can't be wrong. I uh, Let me go. I wasn't gonna, did I say I wasn't going to preach that? Let me give you four more. But I, I, I want to, we got some folks still coming in. Come on in. Y'all getting on the back end. Come on in. Come on in. Come on, come on, come on. I'm preaching it's appointed man wants to die and after this to judgment. Amen. Now let me give you four more. Two of them I'm just going to cover uh, lightly. And then I want to cover two, finish the sermon out with the other two. Number one, four. Now, boy, this is important that I teach this. There is going to be a time of Jacob trouble. How many of y'all believe that? Three of you. One, two, three. That's Jeremiah 30. There'll be a time. Hey, there's going to be a 70th week of Daniel called the tribulation period. You said, what is it for? It is for the Jew. It's for Israel. Somebody help me preach. Hey, Revelation, or, or Ezekiel said they're going to pass under the rod. The subject is the Jews, the times of tribulation. The place is around Jerusalem. And the basis is the rejection of God. Somebody help me preach. Now, hold on a minute. You say, why are you preaching about that? Listen to me. There's a, you've got to get this. Because there's a group out there of Reformed theology people that believe in replacement theology. 
And they say the church replaced Israel. And because they say that, then they can teach that y'all all are going through the tribulation period. And some of you go up in the middle, and some might not go up until the end. That's false teaching. But God is going to judge these people. And it is false teaching to replace Israel with the church. Because we've been grafted in, doesn't mean we replace them. Okay, I'm done with that. I'm going to give you one more and then close with two and I'm done. How many's already getting something? You learned a little bit, ain't you? Let me give you a verse. And I'm going to say right off, okay? I'm going to say right off. Turn to 1 Corinthians 6. I'm going to tell you all right off. I don't understand exactly all all about it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway because it's kind of one that I like to shout on. So far, y'all ain't done much shouting. I think, I think you're a nervous wreck. You know why you ought to be nervous? You are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Makes me nervous talking about it. I ain't preaching this again for seven years. <laughs> Look at the Bible. Are y'all at 1 Corinthians 6? Amen. How many say amen there? Amen. Look at verse number. Let, let's, let me read the context down to verse uh, six, one through three. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Hey, you ought not to, hey, listen to me. They ain't ought to be suing each other. Believers ought to take care of them properly. That's good preaching, ain't it? I'll tell you what, that's why we got all these rules we're having to have about conduct and everything. Amen. Y'all still with me? Look at verse 2, this right here. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Woo! And if the world shall be judged by you, are you, you unworthy to judge the smallest matters. What he was saying is, why can't you take care of your problems in the church without going out to the court? Yeah. Well, this is quiet in here. Am I doing something wrong? Am I? Hold a minute. Uh, look at here. Look at here. Maybe you'll get a smile on your face. No, you're not that we shall judge angels. Somebody shall, somebody pray, somebody praise him right there. Amen. How many believe the devil's a fallen angel? Amen. How, many believe, how many believe that uh, the devil's going to hell Amen. and his angels are going with him? Amen. Somebody help me preach. Amen. They're going with it. Now hear me out. No, you're not. Now, boy, lower scale. This, uh, how many of y'all the devil's ever been working on? You raise your hand. And I don't know if you know this, but he's got some buddies that's working on you. And I don't know how this is going to work. I know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen after the millennial kingdom, right before the white throne judgment. We're going to take part in judging that rascal and getting his hind and kicked right into hell. Somebody raise your hand. Hey, if you're a carnal Christian, you ought to raise your hand. Hey, he's going to hell. I'm going to heaven. And God, because of, Wayne, I don't understand all that. All I'm telling you is I got a part in it. I kind of have a half idea what I'm going to (laughs) say. Hey, buddy, you've been after me, but you ain't got me. You did everything you could, but you didn't get me. How many's never heard that before? How many ever heard we'll judge angels? Come on, be honest. Rest of your line, but that's okay. 
But here's where I want to finish. There's two judgments that are the most confusing ones, and I want to finish with them. And that is the judgment of the nations and the judgment, white throne judgment of the unsaved. Somebody help me. Go to Matthew chapter 25. And when you get there, say amen. Well, y'all's quiet. When you get there, say amen. amen. Look down to verse 31, and I'll read down to verse 46. If you're there, say amen. amen. I'll make sure I'm in the right chapter. The Bible said, and when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. So that tells you that's right at the end of the tribulation. That's the second coming and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come ye, Blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee? or thirsty, and gave the drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed? Or when saw we sick, or in a prison, and, and came unto thee? And when the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as you have done it unto the least of these my brethren. Amen. Who's the brethren? Je the Jews. You've done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left, the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was a thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered? or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall the, uh, he answer, Very I say unto you, insomuch as ye did it not to the one, one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Now, boy, here's what's happened in time. There used to be a crowd that teaches that's the last judgment. That's not the last judgment. Somebody help me preach. Let me give you the subject. The subject is the nations. The time is the revelation of Christ when he comes back. The place is his throne of glory, his glory on the earth, most likely the valley of Jehoshaphat. The basis, their treatment of Israel. The result, some nations shall be saved, others shall be destroyed. Notice, There'll be no resurrection. There'll be living nations on the earth and no books are mentioned. No books are mentioned. I say to you, that's not the last judgment. I'm gonna tell you what, let me, let me give this to you. How many like good teaching preaching? Let me give it to you. Here's what's gonna happen. Look at me. The Lord's coming back. He's come back for his church. I'm a pre-tribulation rapturous. He takes us up, judges us, and then after seven years, we come back. And when we come back, we are going to judge the nations, or he is. And, it, and people are going to go into the kingdom, the thousand-year reign of Christ. That's a, hey, amen? 
and they're going to go in in natural bodies. And, the, and those that didn't treat Israel right going into hell. And I want y'all all to know something. Them people on the natural body is going to have kids during the millennium. And those kids will live up to be about a thousand years old. I am preaching now. And the Bible said the devil going to be chained for a thousand years. Some people think he's chained right now. You're an idiot. <laughs> if he is, it reaches Taze Valley. <laughs> Y'all with me? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, then they're going to have offspring. And then the Bible said at the end of the tribulation or end of the millennial, uh, you read it yourself, the devil's going to be loosed. And they're going to have a second war of Gog and Magog. I personally believe they include the remnant of old Russia, that one seventh that was remaining, but that's just me. Whew. You said you preaching. Y'all with me? They're going to have children, but I want to tell you, every one of those children are going to still face the deception of the devil. And they're going to be a bunch of them who've seen Christ visibly for a thousand years, still reject him. But that's not the last judgment. Somebody help me. Turn lastly, and I'm finishing the sermon. Whew. Turn to Revelation. Y'all do believe in Revelation. Turn to Revelation chapter 21. And I want you all, all to listen. How many people saved here? Raise them up. Raise them up if you say. Okay. Now, I'm going to let you shout. I'm going to give you a chance to shout one time. You're not going to Dwight Throne Judgment to be judged. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's because your sin has been paid for. Amen. Amen, preacher. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Somebody ought to shout. Amen. After I read this, there might be a couple more of you shout. Turn to Revelation 21 or, or 20, and I'm done. Go down to verse 10. I won't just read this to make you shout again. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire Amen. and brimstone, yes. where the beast and the false prophet are. Praise and God. they shall be tormented day and night. Amen. Forever right. and ever. Amen. And by the way, somebody said the world could end today. It cannot end for at least a thousand seven years. He burns everything up. And then there's a throne that appears, and that's it. Here it is. I'm done. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, that's rich and poor people, and everybody in between, stand before God. Y'all with me? Stand before God. And the books were open. Y'all with me? And another book was opened. That's this one, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Now, here's the difference. And the sea gave up the dead were which in it, and death and hell. God, God is going to re resurrect every lost person and bodily resurrect them. And they'll stand before God. And death and hell shall be del uh, delivered up. The dead which were uh, in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. I'll finish. The subject 
is the wicked dead. That's you if you're in this room right now. Hear me out. If you're here lost right now, maybe you've been witness to it. You ain't got saved yet. One dear man here that Mike Blake witnessed to him all those years in prison, he wanted to come to our church today. He's here today. The time is the end of the millennial. The place before the great white throne. The base is the works. Now here's what's going to happen first. You want to open this up? Let's just use it this way. Some of them people say, well, no, I was a church member. I say. I say. Hey, there's some of them going to hell. And he looks down here and sees John Q. John Quincy. Let me see here. Yeah, I got the cues. Let's see. No. Huh? You're, you're not here. You're, you're not here. And since you ain't here, you're going to hell. Every one of you listen to me. I don't know if my name was written from the foundation of the earth or when I got saved, and it don't even matter to me. I just know my name's there. Because when he opens that thing, some of them might say this. Some of, some of them might say, well, John Smith wasn't a very good Christian. Is he in there? Oh, let's see here. Whoops. John David Smith. He saved January 31st, 1973. Washed in the blood. Nah. Ain't no use you talking about him, unsaved person, because he's in the book. What's your Amen. 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 Praise God for it. Oh, but hold it. You ain't in that book. I'm, on, I'm done, okay? Don't get nervous because it's about 1130. Don't get nervous. Y'all better start praying right now, Christian. How many think we ought to pray for all lost people? Somebody ought to hit the altar. Now, here's what it is. He going to go down through here. Oh, John Quincy. You ain't there, but you here. John Quincy, you was at Taze Valley Baptist Church, March the 3rd, 2019. You heard John Smith preach on the white throne judgment. You heard him talk about Calvary and your sins being nailed to the cross. You heard about the blood. But you rejected And the consequence is a living God who created you in his image will now cast you into hell to be there forever and ever or the lake of fire to be there forever and ever. Amen. Now I'm going to say one more thing. Wayne, I can't prove this. There's some scripture around it. Why would they be judged for their works? Because the Bible says there's degrees of punishment in hell. I think there's going to be some people suffering there worse than others, and I don't know how. I'm just telling you, the Bible teaches it. Heads bowed, eyes closed, and when everybody stand, I want you real to, hey, listen to me. God brought you out here this morning to hear. I was not going to preach this this morning. But God brought you here. Sir, you're here maybe for the first time. You don't want to leave here lost. Some of you here, you say you're saved, but you're not really. How many of you right now say, Preacher Smith, if I died today, I know I'm not going to heaven because I've never been saved. But preacher, I don't want to go into the white throne judgment. I don't want to go burn forever and ever. I don't want to go to the lake of fire. I want the blood of Jesus applied to my life. I want to be saved. How many here are not saved? Raise your hand and say, before you die, before the Lord comes, you want to be saved. Raise your hand. Yes, sir, I see it. Somebody else. Sir, won't you just come right now and be saved? You know, you've been witness to. You've been looking for the day to come to today's Valley Baptist Church. You ought to walk down here and let Chad take a Bible and lead you to Christ. You ought to come right now. How many others say, I'm not saved? How many is a church member and you're not really sure you're saved? 
Your name's on, the, on, on uh, Tate Valley's book, but you don't know it's on the Lord's book. Raise your hand if you're a church member, not really saved. God bless that hand. Now we're going to give an invitation. I want another 10 people to come up and pray for this man to raise his hand. They've been witnessed to by a missionary at our church. And I want to say, Father, right now I want to pray for this man. God, you lead him to Christ today. They'll come in Jesus' name. Amen. Sir, won't you come right now? I believe God give you another chance today. God give you another chance today. When to the be saved. Don't reject the it today. Who will Don't be reject it today. Right and left. Are you ready for that day? Oh my Lord. To come. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. too bad to be saved. Are I don't care ready? how bad you've been. God will forgive you. Are I don't you care ready? how far sin took you. God will forgive For you. The judgment Come on. Come on. You raise your hand. Come on. There's a sad day. Come on. Coming. If you're not sure you're saved, come on. A sad day. Come on. Coming. There's a sad come on. day. Coming. By and by, when the sinner shall hear his doom depart, I know he not. Are you ready for that day? Almost done. Almost done. Pull people in the altar. Amen. Holy Ghost got to do a work, sir. Holy Ghost working on you. If he is, you better come on. Ma'am, you ought to come on. Church member, I don't care how embarrassed you think you will be. You ought to come on instead of going to hell. You don't worry about being embarrassed. But I wouldn't walk out that door not knowing I'm saved. There you go. Hey. Well, I got to tell you. I don't want to even want to quit. Bless you, preacher. To thank somebody in this room. Might go to hell. Bothers me. Just a little bit of song. Just a little. Just you. Are you ready? So are you ready? Church member, are you really safe? You ready? Come on right now. God put the tears in your eyes. God judgment. want you to be saved today. He brought Let you here today. He let you be spared. Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? How many Christians will shout? How many of y'all, you never shout? Right now, you're going to say hallelujah because you ain't going to hell. Somebody do it. That's your chance to shout for the first time in your life. 